So the first rule of scratching is that you almost never scratch on a leading deck. So in this case, my leading deck is going to be deck B over here, where I put something steady. It could be a song, but in this case, I'm just going to put in a beat. So I put in a beat, and I set it to an 8-bar loop. So that'll sound like this. And then I'm going to scratch on top of that. So the next thing I need are some good scratch sounds. That can really be anything, but there are some famous ones out there, and I'll link to some of those in the description of the video. But I also have this old starter kit from a course I took, so I, where I have combined some sounds. So if I load that and just play it uh, all in one, it's like this. One, two, three, four. And so on, just a lot of sounds. So those are the ones we're going to use for the scratching part. So the next step then is to enable the vinyl mode. Since we put the scratch sounds into deck one, that'll be our scratch deck. So we put jerk behavior into vinyl mode. That means that even when the track is playing, if we, if we scratch it, it'll scratch, it won't just nudge. Then the next step is to actually try to make a scratch sound. So what tools do we have? Well, we have a mouse and we have a keyboard. So how are we going to use that? Well, the, uh, the scratching part, the one that's supposed to be on the vinyl platter usually, supposed, needs to be very organic to not sound like a machine. And since it's not easy to completely control the mouse, that's kind of organic, so that'll be our scratch part. But the crossfader, uh, or the cut in of the track, for instance, using the crossfader, needs to be precise. So for that, we are gonna use the keyboard. So that's how we're gonna divide it up. You could also try to use the pad on the laptop keyboard instead of the mouse, but I find it easier to use the mouse. So that's what I would recommend. So, where do we scratch with the mouse then? Well, we could do it on the deck here. On the jack wheel. That's kind of messy and gets weird pretty fast. So a better place to do the scratching is actually here on the scratch pane. Since no matter what we do with the mouse, it'll only move in up and down. It's much easier to control and you can actually move your hand a little bit side to side. It won't matter. Just gen generate other very organic sounds. So that's a way better place to, to do it. You can also use your scroll wheel and make the waveform bigger and smaller, which will affect how your scratch will behave when you use the mouse. So you can put that into whatever size you like. Like that. So what more do we need then? Well, we need to find a way to cut in the music precisely. Since the mouse is not going to be precise, it's going to be organic, we're going to use the keyboard for the precise cutting in of the sound. And we do that in two ways. We do it using the hot cues, and we do it using the crossfader. So as you can see, I have already prepared four hot cues on the track that's actually just the scratch sounds. And those are precise cut-ins and the beginning of four of the scratch sounds. So I have these four prepared. So the, those are ready to go whenever I start the hot cues. So how do I start the hot cues with the keyboard? Because the mouse is going to be doing the scratching. Well, you can do that. You can map that in a million different ways. But the way I've done it is that I have uh, go into the keyboard and then I start it out by selecting the factory default optional. Then I did some mapping afterwards. Get back to that in a second. But that was my first step. So what does that mean? That means that the numbers, oh sorry, the numbers one and up 
the four one, first ones, the five first ones. For the left decks, we're going to, just going to be using four. Are going to be the four hot cues. So now I can press. If I now I can press numbers one to four, and I'll get the same result as I did before, like this. Like that. So now that's ready. So I have one, two, three, four, and I'll trigger the hot cues. So I can trigger hot cue and then do some scratching, like this. The important part here is that whenever you need to be precise, like right on the end of a beat or on top of the beat, you just press the key again, because that's precise and your mouse is not precise. So if you're on top of the beat, like this for instance, I think I just sync it. Like this for instance, you, you just click the hot cue with your keyboard key, one to far, to start exactly on the sound and then scratch after you click it. So you scratch with the mouse and you click it with the keyboard. Like that. So that was basically one way of doing it. And that was based on the mapping. That's actually one of the default mapping, the default factory default optional mapping. So what about cutting in using the, the crossfader? Well, that's some mapping I'm going to do myself. So I'm going to select A and Q, Q and A, because they're right below 1 to 4. And on Q, I'm going to have the crossfader go to the middle, which means I'm going to cut it in as long as I hold it down. But as soon as I let it go, it have to go all the way to the right so that I can no longer hear deck one, which is the scratch sounds. So that's a way of cutting it in. So if I go down to Q and I select my custom method that I had before, you can see that I have the crossfader 50% while I press Q. And then when I let it go, so up, the crossfader goes to 100%, which is all the way to the right. So if I save that and I press Q, then I'll get this function. So now it's I'm holding Q down and I'm letting it go. And I'm holding Q down and I'm letting it go. So that's basically all I need to do. So if I press the fourth, which was the long sound, I can do it with the mouse right now. It doesn't say anything because it's all the way to the right. But if I press it again and I press Q, I'll be cutting it in like this. And just as soon as I let it go, it doesn't say anything anymore. So I might also want to have a key to bring me back to center. So that's what I'm going to do with key A. So that's my final mapping. So I go back in here. See A? Well, that's crossfader 50%. So after I'm done doing this back and forth and I end way to the right so it's cut out, I can just press A and I'm back in the center again. So that's basically all. So this holds the tempo, this holds everything, this is the song, this is why I scratch and this is why I make sure that every time I need to get back into a precise hit, a precise cut in, I use either the hot cues or I can use the crossfader. So here's an example, like the first example we had uh, when it's the beginning of the video, but now you can see everything that's happening, including my hand on the keyboard and the mouse. <laughs>